What is up y'all? So today I have the review of the Elite 2 controller. If you uh, were able to watch my other video, you'll notice that I went over the differences between the Elite controller, Gears of War Edition, versus your typical controller. And then I touched bases on this Elite 2 and what I was expecting to receive. So we'll go over some of its features. We'll go over its price point. And then we'll also go over whether or not with the features it offers at this point in time. So let's get into this review and see what it's all about. Okay, so what do you get in the box? First of all, it's your standard Elite controller box. Uh, the typical one. If you have the Elite 2, you would know um, how sturdy it is. Of course, you get the package. We'll go over this right now. Um, and then I have some of the old uh, the old uh, finger sticks or your paddles um, from the old uh, Gears of War one. Uh, these ones I purchased for the original Elite when I first had it. And then I sent it back because I had issues twice with it. Um, but I wanted to change up the paddles. And uh, I kept those because the Elite, when I sold it, um, basically I gave those away. Uh, and then of course your standard instructions, uh, it's USB type C, because as we all know, we got updated or upgraded. So it's the type C, so you get a faster charging time. And they do not uh, include anything else, so you, you will not get batteries because this is wireless charging okay so the case itself is similar to the original case um, the fabric's a little bit different maybe it's because I'm used to the Gears of War edition uh, case uh, you have the Xbox logo there it's like made out of a rubber material really nice and solid doesn't feel cheap at all and then of course you have a rubber uh, pull tab here and then you have uh, your zipper that's inverted or reversed and the nice thing about that is if you get any water that drops on the case it's not going to go in through the zipper this allows it to wick away um, from the device and then also it aids in helping uh, zip everything up it keeps it rigid so the rigidity is there, but also it allows the material not to snag. Okay. Um, you have the double stitching all the way around to keep that material tight. And then also on the back side, the bottom, nothing's changed. Uh, we do see a change on the back side. You have this rubber port here. As soon as you flip it up, it allows you to access the micro or the uh, USB type C uh, port in there where you could plug it in, charge your controller as um, it sits in the case. So you don't have to worry about anything uh, getting in there and ruining your controller. Okay, so let's get into the contents inside. Okay, so the unveiling. Boom. Okay, of course, on the back side here, we're greeted with the same mesh netting uh, that comes in all the other elite um, cases with them you get the controller we'll go into that in a little bit let's go over the the docking and your accessories so you get a little bit different setup with these thumbsticks as you could see there's two short ones and then they have the concaved cutouts here that are smooth they don't have no knurling on the sides like the ones that are on it these have a little bit of knurling on the side uh, and then what's unique is these two in the corner here they're not matching at all so it's kind of unique you get a long thumb stick here with knurling and it has its concaved profile and then on this side you have a short thumb stick and it has its convex profile with um, a little bit of grip that wraps around the profile of the thumbstick. So that's kind of odd that they mix, mix match those. 
and then of course you get your um, d-pad interchangeable little cover and then it, of course all this is like a stealth gray black uh, color instead of the silver that we're traditionally used to and then you have your adjustment key which allows you to tighten up the thumbsticks okay and what's unique about this case is you have a cover right so that way you don't scratch your elite controller when placing it into the um, you know your container you could you have options to pull this off or fold it back when you charge so as you could see you could fold it back put your controller in there let it charge uh, this is a suede style uh, fabric but what's unique about this charger is you can leave it in there charge your controller as is and call it a day or you could take it out this is magnetic so it's magnetized to the bottom of this and it's pretty stiff it takes some some finessing to get it in and out because the magnet is strong it's not cheap at all um, and this allows you to not use a case and then of course you could place your controller there on your desk you know wherever you have your computer or your xbox you could place it there it sticks to it as you can see it it has uh, magnetic properties on here so you get that nice click in effect and it'll be more so if you remove this of course um, and then that'll allow you to plug in your usb type c there is rubber down below on this so that way it doesn't slide around on your desk if you do decide to charge it as is without the case in your way going over the elite controller okay of course you got a full rubberized grip that goes all the way over the top and the bottom and it's unlike the elite the first gen elite where the plastic came down on top and then there was just grip at the bottom okay another difference is the thumbsticks they're chrome instead of a matte uh, sandblaster be blasted silver and then your d-pad of course all this is that matte gray finish and it's like a stealth finish to be exact and these are like um, a slight sheen of silver unlike that real bright silver that the original one has as you can see and then you have your matte uh, finish, the stealth gray right here as well, okay? So of course, when you um, pair up your Bluetooth controller, you hold this, right? It pairs up um, by pressing the sync button. You'll notice that it has that dark white color to it when it's pairing, okay? Um, I showed this getting paired up to my PC because that's what I play on. I have an Xbox, but I don't play on the Xbox. Um, I play on the PC, and you'll see that. One of the issues I've encountered was pairing this via Bluetooth. It paired up just fine. There was extra steps I had to take with Windows 10, and I showed that. But also, uh, what you want to watch out for it was I called out that it was unable to pair every time I'd restart my computer. Um, but I quickly updated everything. I had to update my computer, uh, all the drivers and stuff, uh, which I mentioned in there, and everything pairs up now fine. As soon as I push the on button, everything pairs up just perfect. Okay? So you have your uh, media buttons here, okay? And then you have the center button, which allows you to skip through the different profiles that you have set. Okay. So one, two, three, and then default. Okay. On the bottom side, what we have is you have, of course, 
the area that says Elite Series 2. Um, but you have your pedal, or not your pedal, but your trigger presets, okay? So all the way up to the front, the triggers allow you to fully depress once those are engaged all the way up. So you're able to press these triggers all the way down with the full motion. You click them one to the center, and now they're half a pull to get full depression. Okay? And then you push them all the way down towards the rear, and you have about a quarter or eighth before it's fully depressed. As you can see, it's very minute. It's very tiny movements here, and you get that full trigger pull, which is cool because if you're um, really fast at this controller, um, that little bit of time, you know, will mean if you get that shot off before someone else does. So it's a game changer, definitely, especially because I like to have physical feedback versus the software taking control of feedback okay it's nice to have that physical touch um and then of course you could further that action so these are getting fully depressed here but you could minimize it more by just barely pressing it in the software so you get physical feedback and you get software feedback which allows you to make that real uh short throw make each trigger a real short throw uh, in the software as well as physical touch, okay? And then of course, on the bottom here, you have your three little dots which allow you to charge. There's no longer, um, you know, your battery pack uh, enclosure. So it's all built in. You get 40 hours of runtime with this controller, 40 hours, which is phenomenal. It's it's way better than having to switch out AA batteries. Okay. Now to get into the weird part that I've noticed. Okay. These paddles. They're the same physical feedback as the regular Elite. But they change their size. Okay. And when I mean they change their size. You could physically tell that they changed them. Okay. So, let's start off with these two, okay? You have, in my hand, the original style Elite paddle. And the new one, of course, this is the new one. This is the original style. Um, you have a little lip here. And it kind of gives you a lot bigger area to depress. Whereas the new one's really tiny. It's the same width as the arm itself. Okay. So that's the difference between the two small ones. And now for the larger one. Let's see. Let me grab the other one. So that way you can compare it. So as you can see, it's a lot shorter here on the pad part. And the new, the old one's a lot larger and you also have a little lip that kind of dips down in there. So the old style is a lot larger. Um, but the nice thing about it is they still work on, um, they'll still work on your new controller if you prefer those. Okay. Hold on. Let me flip it. Grab the wrong one. So as you can see, they'll still work okay but that's the difference in size so you could actually physically see the difference in size once they're mounted this one sticks down a little bit further to the back than this one and then also these top ones okay and that's going to lead me into a complaint i have with this setup okay with the new setup when gripping the controller like this right this is how I play my middle fingers are up front and this finger is to the rear okay so this is how I play well having this extra uh, width on this top one versus and also length like as you can see that protrudes out versus this one that doesn't protrude out 
uh, sometimes this one's hard to get to and these larger ones do actually help a lot compared to this tinier one yeah it's nice that you don't accidentally depress it but it's also uh, cumbersome when you're trying to look for this paddle uh, especially in gameplay so my middle finger will actually click it right at the tip okay whereas this one I'm able to grasp this whole pad with my middle finger okay if you have smaller hands that may be an issue having these smaller paddles may be an issue okay but the only way you'll know is by actually using it yourself but I figured I'd bring that up um, because that might mean that you might need to buy some of the older older paddles okay so in order to uh, make your adjustments on your thumbsticks all you do is pull this up and take out your little tool and as you can see it has a Phillips style center uh, which this flat blade is introduced into and you get physical clicks so there's three sets or three positions uh, you got your first second third and if you look closely you see how it's recessed in there well when it's fully loosened so let me loosen it up it's no longer recessed in there that silver piece is no longer recessed so you'll know what what preset you have uh, by physically looking at it but you could also fill each one of them click in so there's only three settings you have here okay it's not much I like to run it in the middle I thought I was gonna like a stiffer let's see so when you pull it as you can see it's giving me physical feedback which is nice but in actual gameplay that's too much for me um, I thought I would like it at its full intensity but as you can see how easy that is to manipulate when you run it at its full intensity it's sometimes it's a little bit too much especially in a, a shooting game you know yeah it's nice to snipe but when you try to transition really fast and I just barely finesse it over it's not as responsive because I really got to click it over um, that could all be taken up in the software as well and that's why we have additional presets here uh, but that's something to consider and keep in mind so I run both of them in the middle I don't like it too loose because that defeats the purpose of having these adjustable thumbsticks and it also feels a little bit better uh, not having it loose because you could kind of finesse the sniper shots in really easily okay so given all its features do I recommend this controller at $179 I don't recommend it it's it's a little overpriced I believe these controllers should be around $125 range maybe even a hundred since you could purchase a standard Bluetooth controller for that $60 range okay this one just has paddles and software and I understand you got to pay for that so about $120 is my price point where I would like to be but given its competition and comparing it to the scuff and the regular elite uh, this one's way better than the scuff and the reason why I say it's way better than the scuff controllers is because where these paddles are situated the scuffs are straight down and that means that you got to use these two fingers to stretch across the controller whereas these are in the palm of your hands at all times okay so if you don't care about the adjustable thumbsticks or bluetooth capabilities do i recommend this over the regular elite no i don't the only reason why i would recommend it is if those features are important to you okay but besides that 
I don't know how long these thumbsticks are gonna last, okay? We know the standard Xbox Elite controller does have some crappy thumbsticks and they do break uh, if you're kind of rough with them. Uh, so that might be a benefit of getting the Elite 2. Maybe they enhance that portion of it or that reliability of the thumbstick since they do have an adjustment there. So maybe they beefed it up. In that aspect, if, if you could find that out, then definitely I would go with the Elite 2 just on that alone because a controller that has its thumbsticks that break down is useless especially at the investment that you're gonna purchase this at do I recommend this controller if you never used a paddled controller uh, capability controller yes I do recommend it okay it's gonna get some getting used to because these paddles are not intuitive as soon as you program them you're gonna forget they're there and then you're going to be playing the same way. So you got to kind of force yourself to play with them. Uh, also, you're going to forget what each of the paddles do. It took me about a month to get used to them. And once I got used to them, it was like night and day. It allowed me to access all these buttons without taking my uh, fingers off the joysticks. At any given time, I was able to access those buttons. So it made me a, a faster player and a more responsive player as well. One thing to also remember is with the Elite, you were able to change out the batteries, okay? This one has an internal battery pack. So I don't know how long that's gonna last for, so that potentially could be an issue in the future. Um, and then the thumbsticks, we're not able to determine if those are gonna be an issue um, in the future as well. So since this controller is Bluetooth capable, I was wondering if it would connect directly to my phone. But as I tested this and tried to connect it to my phone, it would not register. I did not get any Bluetooth pairing uh, options, okay? And I don't know if that's because um, I have an issue with my phone. I got the iPhone 10, or if it will not pair like a standard Bluetooth controller to a phone or a mobile device, okay? Uh, and it, it may be because the the paddles require software to program and that's why it, it's not allowing it to pair. Um, I'm not there yet as far as looking into it. I will look into it. Updates will be in the description as I get updated. Um, also, if anything happens to the controller, I'll definitely update that description. So keep an eye on that, uh, depending on when you're tuning in. And uh, I also tried other software to pick up uh, lower Bluetooth signals. Um, so that way it could pick up any type of signal. And I still did not get anything uh, registering as the Xbox controller. Um, so that's that. It is what it is. If it works, that, that'd be awesome because then you could play Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty that's out on mobile that everyone's playing, Fortnite, and all those games. And that would be a real benefit for this controller. And hands down, this would be the choice to pick up. Okay? So that's going to complete today's review. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting on my YouTube channel, definitely consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one. Okay, so when pairing your controller, the first thing you want to do is, of course, download the app, um, Xbox Accessory app. And when doing so, it will give you something that looks like this here. Okay, Xbox Accessory uh, Connect xbox one controller and get started okay so after downloading that um you're not going to worry about it right now uh this is a little icon in the corner what you need to do is it's a little bit tricky to pair uh, the bluetooth controller it's not straightforward if you have windows 10 
but what you need to do is of course hold the button down to power it up once it's powered up you need to push the sync button which is in the front so you're gonna hold that down for three seconds once it starts blinking uh, leave that alone let it blink and then you're gonna come over here to the little arrow in this corner that says show hidden icons so you could click that and then you have a little Bluetooth icon here. Click it, it'll say Bluetooth devices. Once you select that, it says add a Bluetooth device. So that's how you're gonna get to this, uh, to this area. Let me remove the device first so that way it's not connected. Um, or what you can do is go over to the Windows uh, area. Let's, pan over to that side of it let's see so you could pan over to this little windows icon here select that and then start typing type in bluetooth and then it'll say bluetooth and other other devices right in this area so you don't even have to spell out bluetooth all the way select that and then of course you greet it with the bluetooth page once again Okay, so you're going to notice on Windows 10, or at least I uh, notice this, you're greeted with all these Bluetooth devices that you have and other Bluetooth devices that haven't been connected. So you won't see your, um, you won't see your controller hooked up yet. Okay. So what you're going to need to do is select add Bluetooth or other devices as a big plus it's at the very top so you're gonna select that then you're greeted with three options the first one says Bluetooth as the Bluetooth symbol it says mice keyboards pins or audio and other kinds of Bluetooth devices the second one says wireless display or dock wireless monitors TVs PCs that use mirror cast or wireless docks and that has like a little computer screen and then at the very bottom you have the plus symbol here and it says everything else Xbox controllers with wireless adapter DN DLNA and more so my initial thought was to select this but when I select it as you can see the only thing I'm getting is Linsky and a Samsung TV okay and the reason why I thought I was supposed to select that is because it says Xbox controllers with wireless adapter. That is not the case. What you need to do is select the very first one that has the Bluetooth symbol and it, it's listed Bluetooth, mice, keyboards, pins, or audio and other uh, kinds of Bluetooth devices. That's the one you need to select. So you select that, let it do its thing. And then, of course, you have the Xbox controller that pops up, okay? So, <clears throat> with that Xbox controller um, popped up, it, let's see, where is it at? Let's do it one more time. So, add Bluetooth devices, select that. Uh, we're waiting, it should pop up. Oh, so what, what ended up happening is I took too long and it, it didn't show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the, the controller off again and do it because I took too long. So I'll select that. I mean, there's probably another way where you just select that uh, pair button and then redo it. But we're going to start all over since you know how to get to the screen. And the first thing you want to do is select that, push down the sync button. Hold it for three seconds, it starts blinking a lot faster. Once you get that, select add Bluetooth device. Select the first one, Bluetooth. Wait for it. Um, my Samsung TV stuff is popping up and then Xbox Elite controller popped up. So select that. It says it's connecting. Xbox Elite wireless controller. Uh, it says your device is ready to go so it already sunk um, what you need to do is push done once you push done it's going to pop up here okay 
So one thing you could tell right away when it's sunk is you select this your D-pad and you'll notice you could scroll through just like a mouse with the D-pad. Okay, so you know it's paired at that point. Uh, one thing I notice with this is sometimes it does not pair every single time right away uh, with this Xbox controller thing once I shut it down. Uh, and I have to select remove device and re-add it. It's kind of weird. It may be my Windows update or the drivers for the Bluetooth need to be updated. I haven't looked into it since I just barely got the controller. Um, but... Like I said, once you sync it, everything's ready to rock and roll. Okay, so you select the X. And then now we're going to go to, you know, where we have our um, our Xbox accessories icon. Once we select that, you have this little beaker icon, and that's to test your controller. And then you have the little light bulb here, which will give you the internet and instructions and all that stuff. So... Um, it'll give you a briefing on the controller itself. It's pretty cool too because it gives you a explode view of the controller and then you you know of course got the YouTube video and all that stuff and then they greet it. They, they got a little cool setup there. Anyways you have your beaker which gives you the option to uh, basically try out your controller and, you know press button press button and it, it's just something that I'm, I don't need, right? It's just whatever it's on there. Um, the biggest thing with the wireless controller is I cannot use it right now, okay? With, uh, to pair uh, any of my stuff. So on the Xbox, I heard it pairs right away and you could just go into this and uh, make your modifications. But if you look at the very bottom of the text down here, it, you're greeted with a, um, a little briefing of saying that this controller is connected by Bluetooth and you need to u use the USB Type-C cable to configure it. So it needs to be plugged in direct. So what I have right now is my GoPro cable since it's nearby and that's a USB Type-C. So I won't be able to show you the controller as I do this, but... Um, I'm gonna plug it in and then show you what it pops up. So as soon as I plug it in, you're greeted with this configuration setup, okay? If you already had a uh, Xbox Elite controller, this automatically asks you, do you wanna configure it to what you currently had? Okay, so what we're gonna end up doing is selecting uh, the preset or configurations. We select that. And then, of course, you have mine already preset here. But if I select this, uh, Fortnite 2. So I got Fortnite 1, Fortnite 2 in default. Okay. I already made these in the past uh, for the original Elite. Uh, but what you could do to change up where you want them positioned as far as the number indicators here is just select slot. And then I can now make uh, Fortnite 2 slot number 3. So as you can see, it moved it down to the third uh, light indicator. Um, but I'm going to put that back up to two. And then, of course, you have your copy settings. You have your delete to get rid of it. And then you have uh, your renaming function here. And then this is a briefing of what I'm already preset to, how I preset it. So you can see zero to 50 for that pool zero to one for that pull the trigger pull so it gives you a little briefing so that way you don't have to go into each profile right away and then you select the pencil the pencil allows you to edit each profile so i'm on fortnite one select the pencil fortnite one select it now i could program any of these buttons how i how i want them and how i want to manipulate them okay um i already got them preset so i'm not gonna mess with that uh, then we have the left joystick. Um, of course, you could assign it here, D-pad, whatever. It says use the D-pad to adjust your stick and move the stick around to preview your adjustment. So this is the primary one I have it set to. Uh, sensitivity curve. They have preset ones here. 
default delay. And of course, if you look at this symbol here, it's going to give you the graph. And the graph is this area down here. So it's going to tell you how aggressive it's going to get at what point in time of that motion. Okay. So I have it set to smooth. And by setting it to smooth, what that gives you is you get all this area here as a smooth move of the joystick and then anything out here is going to be real aggressive so it's going to be real short in between here uh, you can make that adjustment here and of course you're going to see that that's going to change up that curve um, so if i go all the way down like that the motion here is going to be smooth so as you can see i increase the circle size it's going to be smooth and then it's going to get real aggressive past that if i go like this and bring it all the way in smoothness is going to be only center, centered uh, in a real small area of that joystick and then all this is going to be fast movement. I don't like this because this is way too aggressive. Um, I mean to each is their own but I kind of like it in the middle okay because if you're trying to do a uh, like if you're sniping you know when, when you're panning in between here you know, you want to make those subtle movements so that way you could get the scope on. But if you change up to the AR, or, you know, whatever type of uh, fast paced weapon you have, then of course you're going to be more uh, violent with the joystick movement. So anything outside that circle is going to act real aggressive and fast. So I, I kind of like it like this. Um, also, you could adjust the joysticks uh, on the physical controller itself. Um, so I'm, I may have to change up this uh, sensitivity here since now I have another factor in the way my gameplay is. And then of course you get the right thumbstick, um, which you can make those same adjustments to. And then we go over to triggers. Uh, the cool thing about this is you get the three sets of, um, of pull indications on the controller itself. So physical feedback there, but in the app, you can make those adjustments change as well. So you get the um, you get the feedback of say a full trigger pull. So when this is depressed from here to here, that's a full motion of the trigger being depressed. Well, say I like that movement; it just feels natural to uh, get that full um, depressed trigger in. Now I could come here and set this left trigger or right trigger. It does both um, to say I want that to be a full depressed trigger. So now when I pull it, uh, it'll fire as soon as it gets all the way to the rear. Okay. But say I like that motion, but I don't always pull the trigger all the way back to the rear. But I don't like the presets that are uh, the physical feedback on the controller that I set. So the buttons on the controller say I don't want to mess with those because I don't like the short trigger pull. What I could do is I could adjust it so that way it's back here. So now if I pull this trigger from here to here, it's going to give me that full trigger pull. So this is an indicator of a full trigger pull. So if I pull that trigger, as you can see, it's lighting up this whole area and I'm just barely pulling it from here to here. Um, and then I still have that. Uh, feedback of a full trigger pull if I get anxious or whatever and I like that full sweep so it's fully customizable depending on your preference um, I'm running them at 50 until I get the hang of where I'm going to place my triggers as far as the physical buttons concerned and then I'll come back and adjust these presets okay and then you get the vibration so if I pulled the left trigger and it vibrates a lot and I don't like that I could adjust it down right here so you'll hear it in the background so I could adjust it to nothing or I could adjust it to very faint and as you can see the little circle got smaller or I could give me the full vibration effect in that and then of course you got the lower ones here which are a little bit uh, slower as far as feedback so they give you a, a deeper thump or a deeper rumble so we got the right trigger and then uh, the main left so as you can you hear it's um, it's vibrating on some plastic right now so uh, never mind the sound it doesn't sound like that 
it's just uh, on top of the printer right now, so it's making different noises. But it has a, a deeper tone to it. And then of course you can make it real low, so the offset, because what, what ends up happening is there's a motor and it has a offset weight, a counterweight that's offset on that motor. So as it spins around, it gives it that uh, different vibration and different feel. But as you could hear, you could hear the difference in tone. So, and then you also get your brightness that you could adjust the Xbox right here. Um, I just leave it on full bright, personal preference. So that's a little quick fix of how to um, um, basically plug in your controller via Bluetooth as, um, on Windows 10 if you're not getting it to pair up, uh, how to look into it, and then what you also need to download to get this controller to work.